This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Retired fireman killed two others wounded in drive-by shooting on Washington Boulevard. A retired firefighter was shot and killed during a deadly drive-by shooting along Washington Boulevard, St. Andrew, on Wednesday night. Dead is 63-year-old Carlton Knight of Longville Park in Clarendon. Two passengers traveling in Knight's vehicle were also shot and injured during the gun attack. Reports reaching the news are that Knight and the occupants of his vehicle were shot by gunmen traveling in another car after he stopped at a traffic light at the intersection of Washington Boulevard and Headley Avenue about 9.30 p.m. The culprits, who were believed to be trailing the retired fireman, fled the scene in their motor vehicle. The police were later alerted and the injured people were assisted to the hospital where Knight was pronounced dead. The condition of the two wounded individuals were not ascertained. A motive for the shooting has not been established. Police probing possible St. Mary cult. The police and other authorities in St. Mary are probing what is said to be a possible cult-like operation which involves a religious group allegedly illegally building an entire community as well as blocking law enforcers from entering their site at a Ben Hill district in the Caron Hall Division. This is a serious matter, declared Chairman of the St. Mary Municipal Corporation, Richard Crary, when the situation was brought to his attention during Thursday's sitting of the corporation. He expressed hope that the situation does not turn out to be similar to a cult-like incident in St. James in October last year when two people were killed as part of an alleged religious sacrifice headed by group leader Kevin Smith. A third person was shot dead during a confrontation with cops at the church. Days later, Smith died in a car crash while being transported by police. One of the officers transporting him also lost his life. We don't want a situation like what happened in St. James, Crary said. I have no evidence, but it is alleged that it could be another possible cult-like organization that is descending on this property and constructing buildings and so on. It is something that we need to take very seriously. He promised to make personnel from the corporation available to accompany police to the location. The news understands that police tried to access the site recently, but the occupants reportedly prevented them from doing so. In response, Crary said, I am surprised to hear that the police and the media went there and were denied access. I did not know that we have anywhere in St. Mary that the police would have been denied access. He further noted that the corporation does not have the power to prevent individuals from accessing the property in question because it is said to be privately owned. However, Query advised that the identity of the rightful owner be ascertained in order to facilitate discussions. Officers from the municipal corporation disclosed that they visited the property recently and served notices for the construction to cease, adding that the occupants promised to seek the necessary approval. Crary responded, in a lot of the cases where we serve notices, persons will ignore those notices and continue to construct, and what we will have to do is to bring them before the court. This matter seems to be more urgent than just a one man constructing illegally. It is an entire community that is being built and it is being built without any approval. The municipal corporation on Thursday was also furnished with a report on what its officers observed when they went to investigate complaints regarding the unauthorized development. The report said the team noticed that there was a work being carried out which was made evident by material, blocks, cement, sand, gravel, lumber to the side of the road. Upon further investigation, eight unauthorized board structures completed and uncompleted that appeared to be for residential and institutional uses were seen in a scattered manner. The property also contains large catchment tanks and the residents were seen doing what appears to be subsistent farming. It was also observed that other sections of the property were being cleared for development. The residents of the settlement seem to be self-reliant, reportedly having their own electricity and water supply, and are planning to do work on the municipal authorities' road that leads to their community. Their religious leaning has not escaped Stanley Davis, 
Commercial Services and the Enforcement Supervisor at the Municipal Corporation. The Christianity side of them seems to be leading them into a different direction, he said. Head of the St. Mary Police, Superintendent Bobbitt Morgan Simpson, who recently returned from leave, said she is aware of the construction taking place. She added that, based on information received, the group is a breakaway from the Seventh-day Adventist Church and appears to comprise anti-vaxxers. Female constable robbed of cash and a gun in Portmore. A lone gunman robbed a female constable of her weapon and almost $300,000 in cash in Portmore St. Catherine on Tuesday in the vicinity of the Sovereign Village Plaza. Superintendent Hope Don Nicholson, acting divisional commander for the St. Catherine South Division, confirmed the incident. Reports are that the woman went to an ATM and withdrew a large amount of cash when a gunman ambushed her at a gunpoint while she made her way to her private motor vehicle in the parking lot, robbing her of her service weapon, almost $300,000 in cash, and her cellular phone. The police are now investigating the incident. Mother of slain child placed in protective custody. The St. James police have placed the mother of a nine-year-old child who was killed after a reported robbery incident in the parish on Thursday morning in protective custody. The autistic child's body was found on the back seat of the mother's car, which is throat slashed. The police reported that the car was found off a roadway in Fairfield in St. James. The police said it was reported that the mother of the child was assaulted and pulled from the vehicle by unknown assailants. The attackers allegedly stole the vehicle and drove it from the scene. The mother reported the matter to the police, who launched a search for the vehicle with the child. Prime Minister Holness announces comprehensive review of Tibet's system. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has announced a comprehensive review of the organization and the output of Jamaica's technical and vocational education training system following receipt of the Education Transformation Commission's report. The report was made public on Thursday. Mr. Holness said the review will be led by Professor Arlando Patterson, chairman of the Education Transformation Commission, and will include an institutional inspection of the Hart NSTA Trust. The review will look at the demand side of TVET, considering how to enable the Jamaican TVET system to better meet the needs of young people, employers, government policy priorities, and the economy, as well as the supply side, considering how to build capacity and capability. This will include transformation of the hard NSDA trust, including options for institutional change and reform. It was necessary to undertake a fresh review because of two main reasons. Firstly, in the nearly two decades since 2004, the world has seen massive changes. Many of the things we take for granted today did not exist in 2004. The iPhone, Twitter, WhatsApp, the Tesla model, what is it, SR3 or whatever it is, didn't exist. The pace and direction of technological change and its impact on society is revealed by examining the list of most valuable companies in the world by market value in 2004 versus today. The ministry has to be responsible for the implementation. As far as possible, we must use the existing resources within the ministry and where there are capacity gaps, we must build capacity to address those gaps. In order to be sustainable, the reforms cannot be undertaken from outside the ministry. This will not build the capacity within the ministry to sustain the reform. Professor Patterson said that there is need to reallocate the resources to develop early childhood education in Jamaica. He also recommended an overhaul of the teaching curriculum for early childhood institutions. The way we train our teachers and the way our teachers teach in the school will have to move from one in which the teacher stands and delivers and the students passively receive. Um, we have scores of recommendation about the teaching profession, about teacher training and teaching itself, as well as curriculum and assessment as we move towards the realization of uh, or incorporation of uh, STEAM education. 
Finance Minister sees Jamaica's economic recovery encouraging. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark has said the pace and the momentum of Jamaica's economic recovery is encouraging and he expects a return to pre-COVID-19 levels of output soon. Dr. Clark made the comments as he opened the debate on the second supplementary estimates of expenditure in the House of Representatives on Thursday afternoon. Dr. Clark said that Jamaica's growth recovery is ahead of similar countries. Jamaica is recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic. Statin reported that the economy grew by 5.8% in the quarter ended September 2021. And this exceeds the pace of recovery in our peer group countries in the Caribbean and peer group countries elsewhere. However, we have still not recovered to pre-COVID levels of economic output, but the pace and momentum of the economic recovery so far is very encouraging and suggests that the economy will attain pre-COVID levels of output in real terms in the not too distant future. The November figures that were posted didn't include an amount for bauxite levy of about $2 billion that came in. The preliminary numbers for December, which, you know, will be published at the scheduled date, show that we are back up to where, you know, we're on par uh, for December. But opposition spokesman on finance, Julian Robinson, warned that Jamaica will return to sluggish annual growth if urgent attention is not paid to increasing exports. He noted that despite the huge growth of figures recently, the economy is still below pre-COVID-19 levels. I think it's important going forward as we move to recover fully from COVID that we emphasize how we can put in place measures to grow the economy and in particular our export sectors. And the export sectors that I would refer to are manufacturing and agriculture. We will have the one-off close to a V-shaped recovery, but after this year, we're going to fall back into the 1% and the 2% growth rate, which has been our average for the last 40 years. The only way we can get out of that is to place more emphasis on those sectors while investing a lot to recover from the education fallout. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.